Good morning, Christ Walk family. It's another Sunday online at Christ Walk Church. We miss you so much, but it's great to be back in the Word with you uh, this Sunday morning. And uh, I just want to jump right into it because I'm very excited to share with you some new teaching. Um, as the Lord revealed the model uh, for the spiritual discipline, if you remember back to 777, the model that we used of walking in grace, I knew then, I told Pastor Jonah, I knew that there was more and we would have to go back to it sometime after 77. So guess what? We're going back to it. So um, you should be able to go back uh, into your comments and maybe um, pull that up and take a screenshot of it, or maybe we can do something else to get it out there. Again, we may even try to take a picture of the model that I have worked on because I'll show you my model. Um, now it looks like the world globe, so you can see that, and um, we'll try to... Uh, figure out a way to get it to you, but that's important. I don't want you to just let that go. It was too big of a revelation. There's too much spiritual discipline in what was revealed through the word and through the model that we created. I feel like God uh, definitely gave that to us to help us. So um, he's shown me more, and this will help us all who want to understand his grace and how to consistently walk in grace. So I'm going to ask a question. Uh, does anyone other than me struggle with self-control in any area of your life? I want you to think about that for a minute. Do you struggle with self-control in any area of your life? Because if you do, like me, <laughs> I have some really good news for you. Grace, say grace. Grace triumphs over any self-control issue that you or I might have. In fact, here's what I'm understanding from reading and studying the word more and more. Grace triumphs over any issue surrounding any of the fruit of the Spirit. So if you have an issue with peace, maintaining peace, holding your peace, keeping your peace, if you have a problem with letting things steal your joy, grace triumphs over those issues. And so um, I, want, I want to make a statement that God has shown me this week. Grace equips and disciplines the soul. Grace equips and disciplines the soul to the exercise of every Christian virtue are fruit of the Spirit, if you want to call it that. Grace equips and disciplines the soul to the exercise of every Christian virtue or fruit of the Spirit. I want you to please understand something this morning. Grace turns you and me more and more toward God so that when we understand it properly, His grace is what not only will keep you and me from falling into sin, but it will help us produce fruit along the way. So this, this is an extenuation, uh, an extension of what we talked about in 777 concerning finding grace from Hebrews 4.16. So if you'll go back to some of your notes, or you may just want to make new notes. Now, I know this is a Sunday morning, but this is, this is more of a teaching. Um, I may get fired up and preach a little bit along the way, but I really want to teach you this. This is so important. Um, grace is divine, holy influence. We, we said uh, several weeks ago that grace is divine influence, but I want to add divine, holy influence because it's a power that's bestowed upon us from God's throne. And we discussed that. Uh, at length during 777. So I'm going back to it and you're going to see me adding um, things along the way. Grace is a divine holy influence upon the heart, if you remember that, and, and how it is reflected in our life lets us know if we truly are walking in grace or if it has become works again. We're going to uh, expand upon that a little bit more uh, throughout the message. So 
Um, it's not just doctrine. It's powerful, 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 divine, holy influence. And it's a game changer for you and for me if we truly understand it. I promise that this is why I'm making so much emphasis on it um, this morning. Again, uh, in Hebrews 4.16 it's so important. I'm going to read this scripture to you. This is actually from the King James Version. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The problem is this. Most Christians are never taught how to find grace. And if they find grace, it's never discussed how to maintain the grace needed to walk out the obedient life filled with his divine holy influence, his divine strength, and his divine favor. Because if, if we, you know, from the scripture, we'll read it and we'll say, oh yeah, I understand grace. Grace is how I was saved. Okay, do you really understand grace and how you were saved? Because mercy also was a part of that salvation, and, and that's obtained, and the grace is something that we continuously find. And not only can we find it, but we have to understand how to maintain that grace so that it's not becoming works again. And so God showed me a few missing pieces since 777 um, and the revelation that he gave me. And I want to make um, four statements, and I want you to write it down. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm going to give you the four statements and then I'm going to go back and fill in, okay? Grace influences your soul to walk higher. Grace strengthens your soul to not sin. Grace causes your soul to produce fruit. And grace keeps your soul so you can see favor. So there's several things that we added. It's not just the divine influence, the divine strength, and the divine favor. How, okay, if you have that, how do you maintain that favor? Well, you have to walk in obedience, right? And, and so now I want to go back to how it influences your soul to live at that next level of living, which is the last part of our model for the grace walk. How does his um, divine, holy grace influence us so that our soul can get in line. We talked about this and the divine influence has to be on the heart. And so that means that the heart, because of his grace, takes on changes. It's molded. It's changed. His, his word um, and the grace does something to our heart. And then it begins to be reflected in our life. And you and I notice it. We, we see how God's changing us. And it is only his grace that does that. It's nothing that we do. The second part is where grace strengthens our soul. And, and by that, what I want to share is so that it's easier to say no to temptation. We talked about this one too. The divine strength when we call upon him in a time of temptation, he always gives us a way out. And so here, here's part of the latest revelation again, since 777, the next two parts. Grace, along with his divine influence, his strength, and his favor, it will cause our soul, cause our soul to be influenced by the fruit of the Spirit that the Bible teaches. Uh, our Christian virtues. And then here's the last part. And grace will keep our soul so that we can avoid sin. And that is what positions us to have favor on our life. We were talking about this yesterday. Truly favor is not just a one-time thing. Favor on your life is something that you see consistently over and over, which means that you have gone through the process of using grace instead of works. And, and you understand that you freely receive this. It helps you in your time of need. And it becomes a, a discipline as you walk in grace so that you can live at that next level with the Lord. And so um, I want to go back to keeping the grace. Because keeping the grace, grace keeps your soul so that you can avoid sin, right? 
and it positions you to bring for God to bring favor in your life. The keeping, the consistency, listen to me now, the keeping the grace consistently is what brings divine favor. Keeping your soul saturated in his grace, which means not only do you have to find grace, but you have to keep the grace. So that means that there's a responsibility on our part to walk in obedience according to God's word. And so we've been missing two parts. It's the cause and the keeping. The causing and the keeping. Grace causes the soul to be influenced by the fruit of the Spirit. Grace keeps your soul to say no to sin and yes to God's favor. Listen, favor is the best flavor, is what I would say to you. You want favor. I want favor on my life. And so, so this is what God is doing with us. And, and these four steps of um, discipline need to be taught in, in order to be implemented in each person's life. If the church does not stop long enough to truly take the word and to digest it and teach it, and, and, and the pastors and the teachers to be transparent enough to share their shortcomings so that you can see a real life illustration and then also to brag on God when we do see grace abounding, it's the only way we're going to learn. It will not automatically just happen because we're saved by grace and obtain his mercy. Please get this. There is a spiritual discipline that has to be put into place. I'm going to be honest with you. Coming to Christ Walk Church may not be the easiest place to come to church because there is a level of teaching that is continuously expressed over and over again. And, you know, we, we make sure it's very clear and there's challenges that are put forth. And, and so you have to adjust yourself to that level of teaching. In fact, that's what you're expected to be judged by. And, and so it requires an understanding of applying the word with the help of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. And, and that's why he said he was sending us another helper that would be with us forever. And so the understanding of applying the word and understanding how to keep this grace and to actively see it displayed in our life comes through a cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you live with a little grace here and there, and I do too. And I'll tell you what happens. It's very clear and you see it. You see a lot of vacillating, vacillating in and out of sin and, and struggling with works. I, I've lived it. I've watched it. And I'm just calling it out and, and telling you that's what we can no longer do. Grace is a soul healing power. Did you hear me? If you want your soul healed, then find grace because it's the healing power. It's the divine holy influence, the strength, the favor. It's what causes the fruit of the spirit to unfold in your life. And you can keep that grace so that it's consistent. Grace is a soul healing power, but it has to be applied through the blood of the lamb with the help of the Holy Spirit, or it will just be out the window. And so I want to talk about our addiction problems. I want to talk about our bad habits. I want to talk about, okay, this is a little easier, your hangups. Let's, let's talk about some hangups that you and I have, okay? Um, they, it doesn't matter what you name it. it. You can call it an addiction. You can call it a bad habit, or you can call it a hangup. The fact of the matter is there's a problem in your soul and my soul, and it's called a wound. And the soul is wounded for some reason. It's usually because of past hurt. Um, and the soul needs healing. Well, if grace is the soul healing power, we need to find grace and understand how to apply it to the wounded soul. Amen. And so addictions, and I'm just going to be really uh, transparent, such as overeating. How about that? There you go. Pastor Chip's issue. Addictions such as overeating. Let's name some more. Alcoholism. How about sexual addictions? How about smoking? If you struggle with smoking, knowing that it's not good for you, knowing that it doesn't do anything to help your temple, but it is it is a bad habit, that's a little easier, right? No, it's an addiction. All of these are addictions, and they come from wounds in the soul. You say, oh, my smoking habit doesn't come from a wound in the soul. Yes, it does, because I'm going to tell you how I know how. How many of you have stopped smoking? And you conquered it. And then something happens in your life that affects you 
internally and you start smoking again. Same thing with overeating. Same thing with alcoholics. Same thing with drug addictions. So the dysfunctional behavior is caused from the wound within the soul. If you want to quit smoking this morning, if you want to stop pornography this morning, if you want to be like me and conquer the overeating battle this morning, then you and I need to understand how to find grace once and for all, truly find it, because there's more and more of it that's available from his throne. Approach his throne boldly. It says that's where we can obtain mercy and find grace. So let's find that grace, and then let's figure out a way through the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit, pleading the blood over our life, and whatever that wound is that's inside the soul that's never really been dealt with, that the behavior results and stems from, there's a root problem, but the things that, the symptoms are, are what we're talking about. Smoking addictions, alcohol, pornography addictions, overeating syndromes, all these things. But here's the great news for you and me today. I love this. Grace is what can heal the soul wound that these addictions stem from. And the root problem is what grace really needs to resolve once and for all. And that can happen. I'm telling you, it can happen this morning through this teaching. Nothing's impossible with God. All things are possible with God. And so I want to give you an example. I told you I'm going to be uh, very transparent. So isn't it interesting on social media? We normally have 175, 50, 75 in the church, and now they tell me, you know, we're reaching ever how many people. So here I am being a little more transparent with my own issues. But suppose our appetite for whatever we feel we need, should it, it should be full once we're properly fed, right? You agree with that? But how many times, not just me, but some of you also, We'll sit there, and because it tastes good, knowing the appetite is full, you continue to eat. Or because you see more food on the plate, you feel like you have to finish it, whatever. There should never be an appetite problem because grace abounds. This is what God's just teaching me. You apply whatever you want to apply. I'm just using the eating uh, the, the food thing. But if I continue with a wound in my soul, and if you continue with a wound in your soul, it is a soul problem that's manifesting through my appetite. That's all that's taking place. And for me personally, it causes me to have food issues. And every time, I love eating. Do you understand that? Now you apply it to whatever you deal with. Pornography, smoking, cussing. How about cussing? Gossip. How about gossip? Anything that you're addicted to. I want you to think about this one. If grace is flowing, and we know that it is, then I told Donna this the other day, love languages are not an absolute must. We've taught on love languages. I think that they exist. I think it's absolutely truth. Uh, but here's what. The enemy can take something that's intended to be good for us, he can even take enjoyment. He can take relaxation. He can take love languages, whatever that we feel is needed, and he can twist it and distort it so it becomes bad for us or we feel like we're not getting enough of what we need. It's just like sex, shopping. Um, how about just talking? Talk, 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 talk. Some people can't ever stop talking. You want me to tell you why you can't stop talking? And most people that talk all the time say, I wish I could just control it, but I just can't control it. I got to talk all the time. No, you don't. Grace abounds. You're allowing something, some wound within your soul to overcompensate in some capacity. And talking is how you uh, deal with your nerves or your uh, agitation. And you just talk, 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 talk. You don't have to do that. And, and so allowing unhealed areas to stay in my soul and your soul will cause us to have addictions, habits, and hangups, whatever you want to call it. And it will cause us to partake in things that I know I don't have to necessarily partake in that much or even at all, physically, emotionally, mentally. I, I don't need it in excess is what I'm saying. Yes, I need food to live, but I don't need it in excess. And it's the same thing with the love language. I, I just really thought about this the other day. Love languages are real. 
We teach them. But if we're walking in grace, if our love language is low, we should be able to overcome that with the divine influence of grace on our heart, right? Not, well, honey, you're not giving me enough love and affection. No, you're not applying grace effectively. Am I right? And so for me personally, I'm just going to be real blunt with you. My soul is the problem. My soul is saved, but I still have a problem because my appetite is not the problem. It, it's not my appetite. The appetite is, is what takes the fall for it. My appetite is being controlled by a wound that's in my soul, and this is the real problem. Appetite really means soul. How about that? And so something closely connected gets off course so quickly because grace has never been fully understood to be fully applied. That's what this whole thing is about. My goodness, I want to teach this to you this morning. Grace is the soul healing power. Amen. It's filled with divine holy influence, divine strength, and divine favor. But there's something else that goes into it, and, and that's that those other two parts where we have to actively seek out the fruit of the Spirit and then keep the grace. And, and so it's the causing, the cause of, of the fruit of the Spirit and the keeping of the favor. And so now three steps must be activated to properly flow, to properly flow in our lives, this grace. What are they? Number one, you have to find grace. If you want to heal the wound soul, the wounded soul, and that's the first step, you've got to find the grace. So that goes all the way back to the very beginning of our model, Hebrews 4.16. And I believe probably part of the reason is because we don't approach the grace, uh, the throne of grace boldly. We hold back. Why would we hold back from the Savior of the world, the God who created us. He already knows our ins and our outs. He's numbered every hair on our head. Why would we hold back? So we have to be able first to find grace. Number two, we have to equip and discipline the soul to exercise the fruit of the Spirit through grace. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We have to equip and discipline the soul. And that's where this whole model comes in. This whole discipline of approaching, you start with your problem and you work your way through with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. And the third thing is the spiritual discipline is the grace walk model with the causing and the keeping added to it. Causing the fruit to produce, keeping the favor consistently. So wounds, man, I hate wounds, don't you? Wounds cause people to get divorced. Do you know how many marriages could be saved if people would just find grace? Think about that. Wow. The wounds, the healing power of grace can take care of the wound before the divorce is final. I'm speaking to somebody. Don't get a divorce. Get grace. Wounds cause people to raise dysfunctional children. You know why? Our children watch us and they see the wounded soul as a pattern and they copy it. Do it for your children. Do it for your grandchildren. Wounds cause people to fail on jobs. They get a job and they can't hold it because of a wounded soul. Wounds cause people to have no friends because it screws you up. Nobody wants to be around you. You're difficult. You don't have to be difficult. You can change by the power of God's grace. Wounds cause people to walk in rejection and rejection just tears everything and everybody apart. You'll live a dissatisfied life until you die if you have a spirit of rejection on you. But grace abounds. 
And there's enough grace to triumph over the spirit of rejection. Wounds cause you to develop, to develop additional addictions. It's not like one addiction is bad enough. They start compounding. How about the alcoholic that also then begins to pop pills and then to do meth? And pretty soon you've, you're just in a full-blown drug addiction. Wounds cause people to turn to drugs and alcohol. And, and here's the sad one to me. When a wound that's never dealt with, that could be healed by God's grace, continues generational curses from one generation to the next. But grace... Grace influences your soul, grace strengthens your soul, grace causes your soul, and grace keeps your soul. I can walk in grace and do good with my eating. Let me just give you a a chip example. For a period of time, and then I blow it for, I don't know, for whatever reason, I get off course. I feel heavier, um, get into a little guilt and condemnation. Does that ever happen to you? And then I get aggravated. And then I just say, well, you know, whatever. And so what's happening is I'm forgetting what grace causes in my soul and what grace keeps in my soul. My soul. And so by default, I move to my own strength. It's not God's fault. Grace abounds. It's free. It's unmerited favor. I mean, it, it, his grace continues. It goes on and on and on. It's, it's available. But do I find it and do I apply it? Are you finding grace and are you applying it consistently in your life so that you see a cause and effect of it? You see the fruit of the Spirit begin to develop and and grace triumphs over whatever that issue is. And not only that, but you keep the grace And you avoid sin. Sin no longer becomes an issue because you're keeping grace. And guess what? Then God can bestow favor upon your life. No matter how many times I blow my diet or whatever I'm doing, grace is still there. Did you understand that? It is free and it's unearned. It's still there. But I, Chip, Pastor Chip, must equip and discipline the grace model in my life or I will continue to cycle through this pattern, over and over again, vacillating back and forth. It, <laughs> does this make sense to you this morning? You and I can find more and more grace. It's free, it's unmerited, it's, it's there, it's God's gift to heal our soul so we will stop doing whatever that craziness is. The devil tricked me to downplay things like overeating. Not anymore. Because my God is giving me his word and a model of grace that I now understand how to apply. Get bold with the devil and win with grace. Here's what Romans 5.20 says. Uh, In Romans 5.20, it says, uh, I'm going to read this translation. But then law came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. But where sin? Increased and abounded. Grace has surpassed it. And it's increased the more. And it superabounded it. See, God's grace superabounds over all sin. And but grace is not for me to order a supersized combo when Pastor Jonah and I come to meet Kayla to work on this recording today. I don't need to order a supersized combo if I know I'm, I'm trying to, to take some pounds off to get to a healthier place. Grace will not remove the three pounds that I gained from being foolish. See, we've got it backwards. We think that we can apply grace to cover up our sin. <laughs> grace gives me divine, holy influence, divine strength, and divine favor with cause and effect of applying and overcoming issues surrounding surrounding the fruit of the Spirit and allows me to keep the grace so that I can have favor. So I will be level-headed and maintain self-control. Grace triumphs self-control. And 
<laughs> because I'm telling you, where we go wrong is we start doing it as works in our own strength. And so to maintain all the self-control needed to cause my soul to be influenced and to keep my soul from giving into the temptation to order the supersized combo. The church needs to understand grace. We need to find it. Hebrews 4.16. But first you must understand what it does when you find it. Grace heals the wounded soul. Understand what it does. It heals the wounded soul. And so when it comes to food... I need grace to say no, not me working up a no response in my own strength. I can no longer use food to comfort my wounded soul. I have to let grace heal my wounded soul. So now, what are you going to do? I've been really honest with you this morning. Maybe a thousand or more people will see this. We must decree and declare Soul healing scriptures over ourself daily. I have tried diet after diet for years. I'll go up and down. I was looking at some pictures uh, when we, uh, before or right about when we left Lincolnton, I think, um, around four years ago, and we went on a cruise. I worked really hard. I lost a lot of weight, working out two times a day. You know what? For everybody's body, it takes different things. But you have to decide what's important to you. But here's the thing. Grace is God's healing power. And if we will apply grace, it will be a whole lot easier to discipline ourselves to do the things that are needed to get us where we need to be. And so after diet after diet and exercise and gyms and nutritionists and all these things, it's time to realize that he died for all my torment. How about you? All of it. Gluttony overeating, all of that. He died for that. We talked about his power on Sunday. He's powerful because he overcame death, hell, and the grave. And so with his power and truly understanding grace, understanding grace, understanding grace, applying grace, I can overcome my food addictions and my struggles or whatever I have, and you can also. And you can overcome any hang-up that you have. So can I. Wounds control our will, but grace can give you and me divine influence, strength, and favor to overcome that which controls us and what keeps us from walking out his grace. Finding and applying his grace to heal my wounds will empower me to make right food choices and to stop when I'm full and not overeat. When our souls are healed, we have an appetite for the good things. His grace is always ready to work for us if we will stop working for ourselves. Grace is a guaranteed promise. And I'm going to tell you how I know because of what Romans 4.16 says. Listen, therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and it depends entirely on faith. In order that it might be given as an act of grace, which is that undeserved, unmerited favor, the influence, the strength, to make it stable and valid. How about that? Stability and to make it valid. In fact, a guarantee to all his descendants, not only to the devotees and the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is thus the father of us all. This verse proves every promise that we're given by God only happens through grace. It is not from our hard work. It's not from our efforts. If there's no oil on it, it's not fulfilled by grace is what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> you know what you have? You have a self-made warranty, warranty that will lapse. It will be of no use to you. But grace is a guaranteed promise that never will lapse. It's validated, as the scripture said, and it's stable. When you get so fixated, and when I get so fixated to lose weight, to stop smoking, to quit drinking, to stop cussing, we actually try too hard. And it becomes works-based effort every time. And we fail because... 
we curse ourselves by removing his grace. Did you realize that? That's, I mean, that's what's basically happening. According to the Bible, we're cursing ourselves by removing his healing power through his grace that can take care of the wounded soul. So what are you trying so hard to stop doing? I, I just want, I want you to put your pen down if, or I want you to stop washing dishes if that's what you're doing, cleaning up after breakfast. I told you, don't do that. You, you can't possibly uh, contain all this. That's part of the problem. You're doing too much. Stop. Stop. Just stop what you're doing. And I want you to answer this. What are you trying to do so hard that you can't do it? What is it? You will doom yourself to disappointment by yo-yo dieting and trying to start over every Monday. I'm always going to start over on Monday because, well, we have, you know, to eat here and we have this to go to and that usually when we're not under these restrictions. That's not going to work because there's always going to be food involved in ministry, I guess. But let me tell you what there's always going to be also, grace. And grace triumphs over self-control concerning food problems. I want you to listen to this in Galatians 3.10. And all who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law of rituals, are under a curse, and they're doomed to disappointment and destruction. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed, a curse devoted to destruction, doomed to eternal punishment. By everyone who does not continue to abide, live, and remain by all the precepts and commands written in the books of the law and to practice them. How about that? That was taken from Deuteronomy 27, 26, but it's Galatians 3, 10 in the Amplified Classic Bible. If you cross the line, if I cross the line and get out of grace, we will be rituals and cursing ourselves, and, and I promise you, gain another 25 or 30 pounds. Disappointment, right? Religious things will not make you skinny. <laughs> As I've gained more weight and all these things, I've realized a curse has been attached to it. That's, that's the problem. Let grace heal the issue. There's a wound in the soul. Are you willing to admit with me this morning, if there is a wound in your soul, quit trying to cover it up. And so I want to I want to take you through some statements, and I want you to write these down, and I want it to become literally a declare. I want you to declare and decree this. I want you to pray this every day. If you will agree, like myself, that there is a wound that needs to be healed in the soul, so that grace can abound. And for once and for all, take care of the issue. Write these down. I renounce all man-made, self-willed efforts to try and stop whatever it is. Lose the weight, stop the smoking, quit the porn. Here's the second one. I ask forgiveness for every empty fast, <laughs> how many times have you fasted and it was empty? I ask forgiveness for every empty fast and useless diet that I have tried. How about this? I ask forgiveness for every empty fast and useless period of not smoking that I have tried. Here's the third one. I decree that I will only do those things the Holy Spirit leads me to do through his grace. I'm going to say that one again. I decree that I will only do those things the Holy Spirit leads me to do through his grace. I decree that I have divine influence, divine strength, and divine favor over blank in Jesus name. What, what do you need to fill in the blank? I decree that I have divine influence, divine strength, and divine favor over blank in Jesus name. I decree that his grace 
causes my soul and keeps my soul. And remember the cause is to be influenced by the fruit of the Spirit. The keeping is to avoid the sin and trust that God will bring favor on your life. For me, God will bring favor on me concerning weight loss and food choices. For you, God may bring favor on you concerning smoking and drinking. Whatever you need to put. Losing my temper at home and my peace. Here's the next one. Every wound in me that is driving me to blank is being healed now in Jesus' name. Every wound in me that is driving me to pornography is being healed now in Jesus' name. Every wound in me that is driving me to gossip is being healed now in Jesus' name. Every wound in me that is driving me to spend money that I do not have and charge credit cards is being healed now in Jesus' name. Next one. I decree that I am no longer under the law of sin and death and no curse has any right in my holy temple. I decree that I am no longer under the law of sin and death and no curse has any right in my holy temple. In fact, I break the curse of the law off of me right now in Jesus' name. You've got to be bold. I break the curse of the law off of me right now in Jesus' name. My soul is completely full of his grace. Go ahead and speak it. Even if you know that it's not, Say that your soul is full of his grace, and I promise you, grace will begin to abound. My soul is completely full of his grace. I will experience miracles in my physical body because of his grace. I am healthy, I am healed, and I am the way God intends for me to be. I am healthy, I am healed, and I am the way that God intends for me me to be. I receive God's grace freely and I decree there is nothing that I can do to work for it in Jesus' name. It's no longer about works. It's about keeping grace. And the last one is with God, all things are possible. Amen. I want you to really digest this message. This is not a one-shot deal. Christ Walk family, I'm telling you, for the next seven days, you need to listen to this message once a day. You need to read those scriptures once a day. And you need to declare, declare and decree from your heart those statements that I made at the end. Plugging in where you know that you're failing. Plug in that area because grace triumphs over whatever it is. God bless you. I love you. And I hope to see you real soon.